In this session, I will talk about two main things. One is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Uh, I'll do it in two ways. Firstly, in a sort of hand wavy, quasi qualitative plausibility type approach. And the second time, I'll give more detailed physics. Uh, this is harder. Uh, this course definitely at uh, senior level. And the second major thing will be uh, introducing you to Schrodinger's equation. Uh, Irwin, E R W I N, a, uh, an Austrian um, mathematical physicist. And he created a famous equation um, arguing that. Uh, he, he was strongly influenced by uh, de Broglie, the French guy's ideas, uh, thinking that if particles do have wave-like properties, then those particle waves, whatever they are, should have some kind of wave equation. Because uh, you know, classical physics has been talking about wave equations for a long time, you know, water waves, sound waves, and, and light waves, and so on. So he thought there should be some kind of particle wave equation and we will derive it. Here it is down here. So that'll be the, the last part of this session. Okay. Right. So uh, I'll, I'll begin with a sort of plausibility type argument for uh, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Uh, saying essentially that there's a, a trade-off. The, the more accurately you know the position of a particle, the less accurately you know its momentum, or, or vice versa. If you prefer to measure the uh, momentum, the velocity, of a particle with great accuracy, uh, you will then lose accuracy about its position. It's a trade-off. You can't have both to infinite accuracy. That's, that's what uh, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle says. And the uh, the reason for that is essentially the tools that you're using to make these measurements are themselves quantum systems and hence have quantum properties. And that reality uh, places constraints on what you can do with measurement. You, you just can't measure both, like position and momentum of a particle uh, at the same time with, uh, with infinite accuracy. Just, you just can't do it. All right? So. Uh, how, how to begin the analysis? Well, with a certain amount of common sense, um, if you're going to look at a particle's position, uh, you know, basically to see where it is, then you presumably you're using light, okay? And before we think about light as photons in, in the Einstein sense, uh, just, just think classically. You, you cannot observe accurately where something is if the something is very small and the wavelength, the wavelength of the light that you're using is uh, larger than the object that you're trying to see. Right? So it's sort of common sense that uh, if you're going to look at a very small particle, then uh, you, better have a, you better use a wavelength <laughs> that, that is smaller than the thing you're trying to look at, okay? And that's where the problems start. So, uh, yeah, so, so to measure the position of a particle accurately, you need to use a wavelength of light that's smaller than the size of the particle, as we've just been saying before, summarized here, okay? But the problem is that light, light comes in bullets, right? The little, little packets of energy, if you like, uh, photons, you know, uh, light, particles. And uh, we can use some particular formulas uh, relating to, to light and uh, use them to create the, at least qualitatively in sort of hand wavy terms, uh, the plausibility of the idea of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, the HUP. All right? Well, uh, so l light, light's traveling along speed of light, that's what C is, C for the speed of light, and it's waving away, right? and uh, you have this obvious relation 
um, f is the frequency of the light, you know, how many times does it go up and down in its oscillation uh, per second, that's the frequency, you know, how often, fre how frequently does it go up and down, and each time it goes up or down, it travels a distance of lambda, the wave length, that's one way, that would be the wavelength of uh, one, one way, right? So the, the number of wavelengths, that's, that gives you f in, uh, per second, let's say, the frequency, so this distance times uh, 1 over the time, that gives you a, a speed. Okay? So we know, we know this relationship. So C is a constant. It's one of the basic constants of physics, speed of light, uh, made famous by Einstein. So C equals lambda f, the wavelength times the frequency of oscillation. So we, we have this relationship. Okay, now given what we're saying here, we need to have a pretty small wavelength if we're going to look at something pretty small, like an elementary particle, like an electron or something. You know, where is the electron when you're trying to measure its position, let's say. All right? So we need a wavelength that's pretty small. So the smaller we make our wavelength to increase our accuracy of uh, measuring the position of, of this tiny particle, uh, you know, so we need a very, very small wavelength. Okay? But because this is constant, as this gets uh, very small, the frequency must go up. So as the wavelength goes down, because of this relationship, because, because C is a constant, if, if lambda goes down, F must go up. Okay? Lambda goes down, the frequency must go up. But we're talking about photons. Um, when we look at a particle, in a sense we're using a photon. Right? We start, have to start thinking quantum mechanically now. We're using a photon to look at that particle. So as, as the photon's wavelength goes down, its frequency goes up. But the, that means that the energy, therefore, the energy of the photon goes up. Because remember uh, here, remember this relationship? This is the famous um, Planck-Einstein relationship, that the energy of a photon is proportional to its frequency. In fact, it, uh, as an equation, it's uh, h times the frequency. h is just Planck's, Planck's constant. Okay. So as the frequency goes up, the energy of that photon goes up. Okay. F up, E up. All right. Uh, so so the energy of the photon goes up. So as as you want your the wavelength to go down, right? Therefore, your frequency must go up because of this relationship, therefore the energy of the photon goes up because of, because of this relationship, okay, so the energy goes up and uh, from relativity and electromagnetic theory, uh, Maxwell stuff, uh, the energy of, uh, sorry, the momentum of a, of a particle, of a photon is its energy divided by the speed of light, e, e divided by C, okay, so as E goes up, the momentum of that uh, photon goes up, has more kick, okay? E goes up, P, P, its momentum goes up, right? So the photon gives the particle that it's looking at, in a sense, it'll bounce off it and come back to be observed, back to your eye, if you like, or your microscope or whatever, okay? So, uh, so the, the photon gives the particle kick, and uh, that creates an uncertainty in the momentum of the particle. Okay? If you if you kick if you kick the particle you're trying to observe, uh, you'll give it a jolt in its momentum. You'll change the momentum of that particle. Okay, sound sound plausible, right? So uh, now now these these little triangles here uh, they represent um, the uncertainty of uh, x x here is just the position. So this uh, delta x is. Uh, a way to represent the idea of the uncertainty in the position. Uh, later, when we start talking statistics, uh, these triangles will take on a much more precise meaning, uh, such as uh, standard deviation, that, that, that kind of stuff from statistics. But anyway, for the moment, uh, delta x just means uncertainty in the position. Okay. So if you want the, uh, the uncertainty in, the, in your position measurement, uh, to go down, uh, so in other words, you, you want the accuracy of your position measurement to go up, okay. 
uncertainty down, so accuracy goes up, right? So to do that, uh, you will need, you know, through that chain of logic, you'll, so, to, so to increase your accuracy of position measurement, you'll need uh, to use photons with wavelength that are very small, hence the frequency goes up, and hence the energy of the photon goes up, and hence the momentum of the photon goes up, and hence more kick, it kicks the particle you're, you know, with a momentum jolt, um, so it kicks the momentum of the particle, so the uncertainty in the particle's momentum goes up because it's been kicked. Okay? So as if you want this uncertainty to go down, hence the accuracy to go up, you, you pay a price, and that is the uncertainty in the momentum because of the kick goes up. So if you want that to go down, this goes up. Okay? And uh, now you can go the other way, you can reason the other way. If you want, if you want to measure now the momentum uh, more accurately, so you want your delta P, that's the uncertainty in the momentum, if you want that to go down, that means you want to give the particle you're looking at less kick with the photon that you're using to look at the particle with. So you want it to have less kick, and that means, uh, so you know, if you want your uncertainty to go down, that means the energy of the photon has to go down, right? And that means its frequency goes down to, you know, to have less energy. But if the frequency goes down, because of this relationship of, of the photon, if your frequency goes down, this is constant, speed of light, therefore your lambda must go up. Right? Your lambda, your wavelength of your photon must go up. And that implies that uh, the uncertainty of the position measurement goes up. Right? Because you're, you're using a, a wavelength that's larger. And the bigger your wavelength, the less certainty, uh, you know, less accurate is your position measurement. Right? So your, your uncertainty in position goes up. Okay? So you've got a kind of trade-off. Uh, now, um, the so they're, 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 yeah, that, that's the sort of hand-wavy qualitative uh, argument for the uncertainty, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Now, in a bit more quantitative form, it takes, so it, it takes the following form, that the uncertainty in the position times the uncertainty in the momentum is of the order, roughly, to Planck's constant. Now, in this argument, we've made no mention of Planck's constant. Uh, we'll do that in the second part here. But, uh, but at least you can see the plausibility that there's a trade-off between accuracy of measuring position and the accuracy of measuring momentum. You can't have both. It's a zero-sum game in a sense. If you measure one accurately, you generate greater um, inaccuracy in the other and, and vice versa. Right? So you, you can't have both. You, you cannot have your cake and eat it at the same time. Okay, uh, now uh, a bit more difficult. It's much the same thing, but uh, using uh, using uh, more more detailed physics formula. And we actually we actually derive this again, but this time with with an H. Uh, we we actually derive the H. Uh, all right. So uh, well, there there are many ways to do this, and. Almost every different um, quantum physics textbook has a, has a different way to do this. So, 